the entire cryptocurrency market, really all markets, are looking pretty gosh darn bad at the moment. Everybody now screaming for the new bear market. The Fed has destroyed everything. It's all going to zero. That is the sentiment that we are seeing right now in today's video. I want to break down the situation for you as well as share my thoughts on the big picture and why I remain bullish on cryptocurrencies in spite of this pretty difficult price action we've had over the last couple of months. My name is Lark. Every day I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. So if that's the kind of content you'd like to learn some more about or you just simply appreciate hearing about, then a quick tap on that thumbs up button would be super freaking awesome. Also, every week my team and I produce Wealth Mastery. This is a cryptocurrency investor report designed to help keep you ahead of the curve in this fast moving market. Every single issue, you're going to get a step-by-step -step DeFi tutorial, an altcoin report, technical analysis, tips, tricks, airdrops, NFTs, portfolio updates, and much, much more. You can sign up for free using the link down below. You can also go premium for less than $10 a week. Now, let's get into this topic. It's one of those days where we're looking, Bitcoin, come on, do something, man. But it doesn't always do what you want it to do. Everyone wants the price of Bitcoin to go up. Of course, dip buyers will appreciate continuing to stack some sats here, dollar cost averaging in. On lower periods, is a lot better than dollar cost averaging in at the peaks. I will tell you that for certain. But that is kind of the sentiment right now in the market. S&P 500, again, dragging down all markets along with it. U.S. equity markets have been feeling the fear, basically. However, you have to keep in mind, the S&P 500 is only down like 7% from its all-time highs, which is hit, hit maybe two weeks ago. Bitcoin down almost 40% from its all-time highs, which it hit like two months ago. So come on, man. Can't we get a little bit more correlation with the S&P 500 here? We only correlate when it's going down, man. No, that's not true. We also correlate when it's going up. Bitcoin has become more and more linked to the fate of the equity markets because of all the Bitcoin ETFs, because of all the institutional involvement, those billions of dollars of institutional money that have flooded into the market, those guys, a lot of them anyway, you have MicroStrategy, for example, which is never going to sell their Bitcoin. Michael Saylor came out and said, I'm not selling my Bitcoin. Of course, you're not selling your Bitcoin, Michael Saylor. Nobody thought you were going to sell your Bitcoin, dude. You are in it for the long run. But a lot of these institutional players, they're just here for a short time, right? So that is uh, problematic because as soon as things start to look shaky in the equity markets, these guys go running for the exits, dumping their Bitcoin on the way, unfortunately. So with the S&P 500 going down, you have to ask the question, what the heck is going on with the S&P 500? It's the Fed, man. It's the Fed. Everybody freaking out over the Federal Reserve and what they're doing, which you know, for a crypto holder, just feels so ironic that people are selling their Bitcoin because they're afraid of what a central bank is doing when Bitcoin was designed to replace central banks. Yes, the Federal Reserve is going to raise interest rates probably three times this year where the U.S. interest rates are going to go from 0.25% all the way up to a ragingly high 1% by the end of the year. That would still be a negative real rate accounting for inflation if inflation were to stay at a relatively similar level to what it is right now. That is still a negative real rate of around 5 to 6%. Inflation is dramatically outpacing inflation, uh, interest rates. That being said, the tapering is also coming. That is meaning that the Federal Reserve is going to be buying less assets. Uh, and it's already started. They've already started the tapering process. And within a couple of months, there will be no asset buying happening at all. So as Jim Bianco pointed out here, the Fed has slammed on the brakes and the panic that the stock market is going to get thrown through the windshield is happening right now. People are freaking out, at least, you know, all the institutional players, a lot of the, the big money guys, they're going, oh gosh, the Fed's going to ruin the party. Panic selling is ruining the party, guys, realistically. But 
everybody's afraid of what the Fed is doing. But when you actually understand what the Fed is doing, it's not really that scary. It's okay that they're not going to be buying up truckloads of assets. That's fine. It's okay that interest rates are going to go up. But the market does not seem to agree. A lot of these guys are freaking out. And as Jim points out here, something more than a standard correction could be underway. Now, he goes through um, a few different statistics here showing that the current price action in the market is not normal and matches up more appropriately with some of the harsher market events in terms of corrections we've had for the stock markets in the last two decades, which is definitely some stop and think about it for a moment, food for thought kind of things. Because if the, if the stock markets go through a big, big correction, it's definitely dragging crypto along with it. He says maybe the realization the Fed is going to address inflation and slam on the brakes hard is indeed um, pushing this more than a standard correction narrative forward. So people are freaking out. This is, as he says, the market freaking out. S&P 500 is down 7% from the all-time highs. This is the market freaking out. But we could, of course, go lower. Uh, Mike McGlone, a... Um, analyst over at Bloomberg. He said, the number one theme I've been using for months now is don't fight the Fed. If you're long risk assets, you're fighting the Fed. And cryptos are the riskiest assets. He says the key thing to remember is that Bitcoin is the least risky among those cryptos, which is why, of course, I have the biggest stack of my crypto holdings into Bitcoin. He goes on, as the Fed attempts to rein in inflation, dramatically decrease asset purchases, the, out the outlook is thus much less appealing for risk assets in the near term. So I think it's transitioning from a risk on to a risk off asset. That's his opinion on Bitcoin moving forward. He said his prediction coming in at this, the markets pull back. Finally, we get a 10 to 20% correction in the stock market. All correlations are one, which is usually the way it works. Bitcoin comes out better off for it. So if, just think, right now stock markets are down 7%. S&P 500, not all. Yeah, it's uh, just an index of top 500, but you know, still, we're down 7% uh, from the all-time highs. Where do you think crypto is going to go if we go down 20% for the stock markets? That could get rough in the short term. As Mike Novogratz points out, it says the Russell Index broke a major support, and today's rollover confirmed it is broken. This is now a bear market. There is $1.2 trillion of bad equity longs above the market. That's a lot of, uh, lot of uh, leverage and stuff that can be unwound here. He says, uh, for the stock market, sell rallies, don't buy dips. He says, crypto is going to have a hard time rallying until stocks find a base. That said, crypto already had a decent sell-off and is running into some buying support. So it'll be interesting to see if crypto can have a breakaway moment in this situation here. Remains to be seen. I think it depends a lot on how bad we could see the equity markets going. Bitcoin right now, at the time of recording this video, was chilling at a major line of support. But how long will buyers keep that pressure up? And can buyers step up enough pressure to actually see us have a breakout moment here for the cryptocurrency markets? Well, we have the stock markets going down, a flood of money looking for somewhere to go come into the cryptocurrency markets. That is a very real possibility. But as he says here, until stocks find a base, I'd say all bets are off on uh, what could happen if we see a very deep correction in the stock markets. It was probably not going to be the best thing for the crypto markets in the short term. My thoughts over on Twitter today, I feel like this is a repeat of mid-2021, what we're seeing right now. We have lots of media FUD. You know, we have Russia and Central Bank wanting to ban uh, cryptocurrencies. We have ad bans in a lot of different countries. We have the European Union uh, calling for a banning on uh, cryptocurrency, particularly Bitcoin mining. Obviously, it's one of the few proof-of-work coins left. And we have the Fed FUD out there. Is the Fed FUD the new China FUD? Because at the end of the day, everyone's going to realize that, hey... None of this actually matters. China banning Bitcoin mining and uh, you know Bitcoin exchanges and stuff like that, none of that really mattered. We rallied to a new all-time high without China. The Fed, 
the FUD's here. It's happening. People are already panicking in the equity markets. We could see that panic continue uh, moving forward. Fear levels remain high. But at the end of the day, this too shall pass. It always does. Everyone out here expecting 90% drops across the board for everything. That fear is very real in the market right now. Potentially see a massive short squeeze coming for the cryptocurrency markets after one final you know, rinse out to get all the fear out of the market, wind that leverage back down to a very, very low level. Now, all that being said, all the fear and stuff in the market, am I worried about my cryptocurrency investments? Am I selling everything right now? No, I am not. I have also taken profits consistently for the last year. Selling altcoins on massive pumps, cutting off profits on some of my most my most favorite bags like Matic and stuff like that took profits that multiple times on the way up. I'm going to be okay if we hit a massive, massive bear market. I hope that most of you guys are going to be okay too. I hope that you didn't invest more than you can afford to lose because short term things could get rough and it could really test your resolve in holding these crypto assets. Long term, even mid term, I remain super, super bullish, even if short term we could have some more rough times in the market due to the equity markets specifically. Now, if we see a big bounce in equities, that changes the picture. But if equities keep getting bearish and keep going down, that could bode very heavily on the cryptocurrency markets, just to be clear about that. As Dan Tapiero points out here, massive generational wealth transfer is beginning. He has a simple chart here to explain all of this. Here we go. Traditional portfolios, 40% in bonds. Bonds, oh, that's hilarious. 60% in stocks. Millennial portfolios, 40% Bitcoin, 60% stocks. We have a flood of liquidity coming into the crypto ecosystem. They want yield. They want return. Bonds are a joke. Most bonds are near zero or even negative yielding. Who the heck is buying negative yielding bonds? I have no idea. That's insanity. But people are doing it. People are doing it. Bonds are done, at least for the time being. Bitcoin, however, in spite of the crazy volatility, has consistently returned over time. It is still a tiny little baby asset. I want you to understand this right now. The global bond market with near zero yields or negative yields, that means you buy the bonds, you get less money. It's insanity. 120 trillion freaking dollars. 120 trillion dollars. Insanity. Bitcoin still under 1 trillion market cap. I'm holding my Bitcoin. I think you see a lot of um, institutions, companies, all this stuff. They're paying more and more attention to what's happening in the crypto space, particularly with Bitcoin, all of the time. Buying and holding Bitcoin is the safer bet than buying and holding onto bonds or buying and holding cash. It's crazy. That's craziness because you know you're going to lose when you hold bonds. You know you're going to lose when you hold cash. Bitcoin, you're likely to win. Another interesting statistic for you, total crypto users nearly tripled in 2021 from 100 million to 300 million. Now, if we were to have the same uh, rate of growth in 2022, then we will be at or near 1 billion users by the end of the year. How could we possibly get there? NFTs, gaming, DeFi, all this stuff that's going on. If the, if the stock markets really do have a good, good solid rinsing out, where do you think all that money is going to go? People are going to go, man, I'm not going to go and buy these stocks. I'm going to go buy dog coins. I'm going to go buy Bitcoin. I'm going to go buy gaming coins and NFTs and all that stuff. This is where the money could start flowing in a very, very quick way. So this is how we could see a billion users coming into the cryptocurrency markets by the end of the year. Past performance does not indicate future performance, obviously, obviously. However, it's an interesting food for thought to think that if we did have, even if we doubled, if we went from 300 million to 600 million new users this year, we're going to have 300 million new users come in and everybody's just going to fade the crypto markets. Yeah, we could have some rough times over the next few weeks or a couple months even while the equity markets sort themselves out long term by the end of the year. I mean, if you're not even thinking on a year time frame, what are you doing? What are you doing, man? So many people in this market just want to get rich overnight and the second it doesn't happen, they... 
they rage sell for a loss and they run away and scream it's all a big scam until they come back to buy the top the next time and then repeat until they're broke. You accumulate on the low, you see the big frickin' picture. Hundreds of millions of people coming into the market. Fidelity also out here shilling Bitcoin for us, saying that countries that secure some Bitcoin today will be better off than their peers. Basically making the case that central banks are going to buy Bitcoin. Uh, we're going to see sovereign wealth funds getting more into Bitcoin. We already have sovereign wealth funds from Singapore and the United Emirates uh, into Bitcoin directly. We will see more countries beyond El Salvador uh, and beyond uh, some of the other we call them basket case countries, places like Iran, for example, which has been accumulating Bitcoin for the central bank, Venezuela, which has been accumulating Bitcoin for the central bank. What they really want to see and what Fidelity is talking about here, the Switzerland's, the, the Japan's, places like this that are actually going to say, hey, we're going to buy a billion dollars of Bitcoin for our central bank reserves as an addition to our gold reserves. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of time for that to happen. And look, when it comes to the state of the markets, Price is such a funny indicator of success. People think, well, just because the price is going up or the price is going down, price is going up means everything is great, the technology is amazing, price is going down, the technology is crap. It's not how it works. The reality is hundreds of millions of more people are going to come in this year into the cryptocurrency market. The technology has literally never been better. You have more blockchains than ever. You have more layer twos than ever. You have gaming, play-to-earn gaming where you can earn actual money. People in uh, developing regions are literally out there earning a living or more than they would earn working at some crap job just by playing video games all day. It's insanity. Play to earn gaming is going to be massive. We have some of the best games coming out now for crypto. I mean, we've never seen this quality of games in the cryptocurrency market. They're happening now. They're coming out now. People are building and developing and releasing these games across a wide variety of different blockchains. It's very exciting. The market now is nothing like the market of 2018. Everybody says we're going to have a repeat of the 2018 bear market where everything just collapses into utter oblivion. I don't think that is the case. Now, can it get worse if the equity markets get worse? Yes, of course it can. But look at what's being built. We have users using stuff. People are playing the games. People are using the DeFi, right? Look at this. DeFi, total value locked quarter trillion dollars almost 230 billion locked across the chains and that was uh, up to over two uh, about 250 billion over 250 billion just a, a few weeks ago as the asset prices were a bit higher a lot of this is um ethereum and stuff locked up in DeFi, but an incredible amount of money in the market using the products the money doesn't have to exit the market anymore you can just stay in curve finance and be earning 20 percent on your stable coins where are you going to go? Bonds? You're going to go to bonds? You're not going to bonds. Who's, go who's buying bonds, man? Who are these people? Who are these people who are buying bonds? What are you going to go? Back to cash? Yeah, sure. Just take cash. Put it in your bank account. Chase Bank will give you 0.01% on your money. Meanwhile, inflation is 7.1%. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. People are staying in the cryptocurrency markets. And look, if you are one of the 200 million new cryptocurrency users that joined in the last year, welcome. <laughs> we baptize by fire in crypto land. Get used to it. If this is your first rodeo or maybe your second rodeo, if you were around for the, the fun and festivities of mid-2021, you know what's going on. You're starting to get an idea for the picture of the cryptocurrency markets. Wildly volatile, wildly profitable if you can survive. Anyway, just my two Satoshis for the day on the state of the markets, what we could be expecting in the short term, and of course, my long-term view, which has not changed on the cryptocurrency assets. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and peace out till next time.